Hi, I'm Thomas Finney from Adobe Systems. I'm the product manager for fonts and global typography. And I'm going to be speaking at the Imagine It conference about Adobe's approach to designing pan-European typefaces. That is, typefaces that cover Latin, Greek, and Cyrillic alphabets. And essentially, there are a number of problems in designing pan-European typefaces. Um, some of them are political. For instance, uh, we recently defined it in extend defined an extended Cyrillic character set, and it turns out that uh, you know if you make choices about which particular Cyrillic languages you're going to support, that there are political implications of this. You know, there are languages spoken by smaller numbers of people that if you choose to support them or not, that has serious implications politically. Another interesting question is just as we, especially not just doing Western European typefaces, but Eastern European accented Latin characters, we learned a lot about how accents need to relate to base characters. So you know, some of this is just things like weighting of the accents, that they need to be as heavy as the characters they go with, or at least close. Um, also just a matter of how these accents are designed. So for instance, in Ogonek, the um, sort of hook-shaped accent that's used on certain vowels for, say, Polish and so on, um, the Ogonek isn't just added on to a letter. It has to be integrated into that letter's shape. Similarly, there are issues with accent angles. Some alphabets have both um, acute accents and grave accents. Oh, sorry, other way around. Acute accents and grave accents. And some have only acute accents. And it turns out that in, with the languages that only have acute accents, they may make that angle steeper because they don't have to tell it apart from a grave accent. So especially in display typography or on top of capitals, that accent can start being very vertical. And um, so making typefaces that can actually adapt to the particular language they're used in is an area that we're starting to explore. Another good example is um, with the Cyrillic languages, there are certain letters that look like backwards versions of other letters, but they're not actually the same as simply mirroring a letter. So for instance, the Cyrillic ya is similar to a, a backwards r, but it's not actually the same. There are design differences. Um, same is true for the Cyrillic e, which looks kind of like a backwards n, but it's not. And for that matter, um, the Cyrillic f looks rather like the Greek letter phi, but there are reasons why you might design them just slightly differently. Or the Cyrillic letter S, or Cyrillic, actually the Cyrillic letter Z, which I'm probably pronouncing badly, looks rather like an S, but um, some people think maybe it should be a little wider than you might design an S. Yeah. So there are a lot of issues like these that we encounter in designing pan-European typefaces, and I'm going to explore those and show a bunch of visuals. For Greek, there are a number of very interesting problems. The Greek capitals are very similar in design to um, Latin capitals, but the Greek lowercase has very much a calligraphic tradition, and this presents some peculiar problems. And also the Greek lowercase, when drawn, the angle of a pen that you would use to write it, if you're using a broad-edged pen like for calligraphy, and it's also sort of the root of our typographic forms, uh, for a Latin typeface, typically that pen would be at about a 30 degree angle. So, but for a Greek, a pen would be back slanted and just maybe 10 degrees or so off the vertical, and it creates very different letter forms. This is particularly a problem if, for instance, you're doing a uh, geometric style typeface. How do you how do you integrate geometric style sans serif with these very calligraphic, fundamentally calligraphic letter forms?